Savior, where'er the pathway may go. so low. I will live for Thee, my Savior, though war and strife mark the way. I'm so weak, but Thou art mighty, so live through me day by day. Place my life in thy hands. I will follow thee, my Savior. Lead home, my shepherd, lead home. I surrender all, my Savior. I hold no thing back from thee. is thine to use, Lord, thy living sacrifice me. I rest in thee, rest in thee, I place my life in thy hands. I will follow thee, my Savior, Lead on, my shepherd, lead on. When the race lies before me and the wind is blowing strong, when the wind is around me and my strength is all gone, when the tonight and turn to the book of Micah, if you would, the book of Micah, chapter 6. If 
appreciate all the good music today. It was a blessing. Micah chapter 6, look down at verse 8, if you would. And the Bible says, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you uh, tonight for the service we've entered into. Thank you for all the good music today. Thank you for all the teaching and preaching that's gone on uh, in the house of the Lord today. And I pray, Father, that you would speak to our hearts and um, teach us from your word tonight. And uh, Father, help us go with here something that would help us live better for you. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible here says... Oh, uh, in verse 8, he has showed the old man what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee. And then he says, but to do justly. I want to focus on that word just tonight, justly, or to do justice, if you would. And so again, tonight we need to, we need to define what justice is. The Lord says, here's something that I require of you. And if he requires it of it, then we need to know what it is. Do we not? Amen. Okay. So um, somebody tonight, uh, take, a, take a leap at justice. What does the Bible talk about when it talks about justice? All right. Anybody? You have no idea, right? Okay, go ahead. Okay, to make right. Okay. Or to do right. Jack? It's like dealing fairly with someone. Okay. Dealing fairly with someone. Okay, we're getting close to what I... Uh, okay, go ahead. Okay, obedient to God's precepts. Uh, so take what you said and what Alan said, and uh, you said dealing right with someone according to what? According to, according to the Word of God. According to God's precepts. So let me give you the definition that I've come across. Again, it's not mine, uh, but I like it, and so I'm going to use it tonight. Justice is a personal responsibility to God's unchanging laws. A personal responsibility to God's unchanging laws. You know, folks, we, we live in a time today... Uh, and, and forget the outside, forget the world out there, uh, but within the church, uh, we, we just live any way we want to. You know, we're under grace, right? We are. Amen. Praise the Lord. But folks, grace does not give us the license to go out and live any way we want to. The Bible talks about justice, and we're going to talk about that word tonight. Got several verses of scripture that we're going to look at. Uh, but I want to take that definition that I give to you. Personal responsibility to God's unchanging laws. And we're going to look at several verses tonight of scripture. And uh, then we'll, 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 we'll take that word justice in the Bible. We'll define it. And, and then s sort of apply that definition uh, in the word of God here. And as I was doing that, I was saying, wow, this is... This is, this is good stuff. Considering our responsibility. Folks, as a child of God, you and I are responsible to God's laws. And uh, um, listen, I, 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 can't, I can't keep God's laws to earn salvation. It's impossible. Uh, Jesus went to Calvary as my spotless Lamb of God he fulfilled every jot and tittle of the law of God for me. And, and, 
and praise the, praise the Lord. That's the only way you and I can stand before God uh, w with our sins forgiven. And, and so we, have, listen, when God gives us a command in Scripture, uh, Jesus, if you love me, keep what? My commandments. He didn't say, if you love me, go out and live any way you want to. Folks, you and I tonight, we have a, a, a personal responsibility to God's unchanging laws. You ever heard this statement that history repeats itself? Y'all heard that? You know, I disagree with that statement. I don't believe history repeats itself. I just believe we serve an unchanging God. And if you violate God's laws, listen, the results are the, the, just what they are. You can say, well, they repeat themselves. No, God's just unchanging. And uh, we're responsible to those unchanging laws. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm not responsible to keep the law for my salvation. Jesus accomplished that for me. Praise the Lord. And um, if I were responsible to keep the law for my salvation, none of us would make it. No man, woman ever born on the planet would ever make it. But personal responsibility to God's unchanging laws. Let's get into it and look about it, look at it for just a minute. In Isaiah 56, in verse 1, you could say uh, that it is commanded. Justice is commanded. Uh, Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice. Now, a lot of times when you read that uh, justice and judgment in the Bible, uh, judgment and justice, uh, in many verses of Scripture, they go together. And, and they're close in meaning. Uh, but the, thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice. Do, and do justice. Our personal responsibility to God's unchanging laws. Do justice. Do right. For my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Um, uh, hey, uh, folks, we're saved. We're, those of us who know Jesus Christ, our Savior, uh, we're saved. Salvation has come. Uh, but many times when you read the word salvation in the Bible, it's not talking about that, for, that moment that you trusted Jesus Christ. It does. It means that. Uh, but listen, folks, we're being saved every day. We're being delivered every day. Our salvation is near to come. Our deliverance is near to come. The, the trumpet's going to sound. And folks, we're going to be out of here. <laughs> and we'll know salvation uh, in a way we've never known it before. When we see him, we'll be like him. We'll see him as he is. But until that day, we're to do justice. We're to have a personal responsibility to the unchanging laws of God. Listen, folks, uh, homosexuality uh, was wrong in the book of Genesis, and it's wrong today. I don't care what happened between then and there. I don't care what man has come to say, uh, uh, diversity and this and that and the other, and, and, and uh, you, you can change from what you were born as to be what you weren't born as. All of that stuff, uh, it, it's contrary to justice. The justice of God, the unchanging laws of God demand what's right and wrong. And you and I have no right to go outside the parameters of what God says is right and wrong. Uh, don't be swallowed up with that. And I don't think you will be. Uh, but uh, so justice is commanded. Uh, Christ is the example of it in Jeremiah chapter 23. You say, wait a minute, preacher. Now, uh, Christ didn't come to the New Testament. You talk Jeremiah. <laughs> uh, Jeremiah 23 and verse 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will rise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute just, uh, judgment and justice in the earth. Oh, listen, folks, Jesus was the example of responsibility to God's unchanging law. 
Oh, listen, in the New Testament, when Jesus came to the earth and lived, he lived 33 and a half sinless years. There was not one of God's one unchanging laws that he violated. Not one. I'll raise unto you a righteous branch. The Bible says, a king shall reign and prosper, shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. I'm so glad Jesus went to the cross, the sinless uh, uh, Lamb of God died and shed his blood for you and me. And because of that, because uh, he fulfilled God's unchanging laws, those of us that know Jesus Christ will stand on heaven's shores one day. Because he did justice. The Bible says uh, in 2 Samuel in verse 23 uh, that justice is required of rulers. The Bible says, the God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. Just, righteous in government. Folks, we have the opposite of that today. We have the total opposite of what the Word of God says. I, I, get, <laughs> I get exercised when I think about the wickedness that takes place in our government today, the laws that are being passed. We've got some out there in government that are trying to pass righteous laws and they are being attacked today. How dare you say that we can't give a, 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 a pornographic, ungodly, wicked book to a kindergarten age person? It's, it, we can give them all of that filth, but we can't give them the Word of God. See, justice is, is, is totally opposite. God requires rulers to rule in justice, ruling in the fear of God. He that ruleth over men must be just. And folks, when we vote people into office that aren't just, then... This is what we get where we're at today. I, I'm not, you, you know, I look at a platform. I, all I have to do is look at what somebody believes, what their beliefs system are. And it, it tells me how I vote, how I can vote, how I should vote. I'm not telling you how to vote, but how could you ever vote for someone who would vote for the murder of unborn babies? I mean, that issue alone settles it for me. Which side do you stand on that issue? There's so much more, but it just... God requires judgment. And it's the verse that we started out with in Micah 6, 8. He hath showed the old man what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly. Personal responsibilities to God's unchanging laws. Folks, you and I as a child of God today, we have a, we have a responsibility to the unchanging laws of God. And there's no preacher, there's no deacon, there's, there's, there's no one, no one anywhere has any right to change it. God wrote it, He said it, He, he meant what He said, He said what He meant, and you and I have a responsibility to it. God delights in justice. In Proverbs 11 and verse 1, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord and a false balance there gets the, gets the idea of a, a set of weights and you know you, uh, you, 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 you've got uh, uh, something here in the balance and then on this side uh, you put a weight to, to, to balance it out and, and so it's what it's, it's talking about a false balance there are those who would, uh, would change the weight 
uh, to give this a, 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 a maybe what you're paying for over here a false balance so you end up paying more than what it's worth is the idea that is talking about here a false balance is abomination to the Lord but a just weight is his delight and so uh, hey you want to be a delight to God have a personal responsibility to God's unchanging laws. God gives wisdom to execute justice. In Proverbs 2, 6, For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Verse 9 says, Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, yea every good path. That word righteousness here is the same word that's translated justice in other passages. So God gives us wisdom to be able to discern what God's unchanging laws are. You know what I've said so many times? My problem's not knowing right from wrong, right? What's our problem? Our problem's doing right. I know right from wrong. I don't have a problem with that. I come to very, very few crossroads in the road where I don't know which way to go. My problem is going the way I know I ought to go. Where does that come from? God gives us wisdom to know right from wrong, to know which path to take, to, to know what justice is uh, in our life. It brings a reward in Jeremiah 22 and verse 15, obeying God's laws and uh, being responsible to God for those unchanging laws brings a reward in Jeremiah 22, 15. Shalt thou reign because thou closest thyself in cedar? Did not thy father eat and drink and do judgment and justice? And then it was well with him. When was it well with him? When he did judgment and justice. When he was responsible to God's unchanging laws. It went well with him. Folks, you want it to go well with your soul. Find out where God wants you to be. Find out what the Word of God says. Find out where God uh, stands and stand in that place. And it'll be well with your soul. I didn't say it'd be popular, but it'll be well. I'm telling you what, folks, a lot of times it won't be popular in the house of God if you stand where God stands. Uh, there'll be people around you in the house of God won't understand it. But you'll be in the right place if you're standing where God stands. We ought to study the principles of justice. What a, how can we know what they are if we don't study? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest. Look at what it says. Whatsoever things are just. That word just there has the idea of observing divine laws. God has set parameters for you and I, folks. And inside of those parameters, we have liberty and freedom. But when we get on the outside of those parameters, folks, that's when we have trouble. God has drawn a line in the sand, so don't go across it. I say, move back from the line in the sand. Don't play so close to it. You get so close to the gray areas in our life. Folks, you're not careful, you'll step across the line. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. I want to find out the mind of Christ. Folks, that's where you and I ought to go in our life because we have the mind of Christ, the Bible tells us. What an amazing statement. The Bible says that we have the mind of Christ. We can think after the things of God. But we have to think on them. Folks, that's where, uh, the battle's won or lost right there in the mind most of the time. How do you feed it? What do you feed it? <laughs> I feed on cheeseburgers. <sighs> they good going down. I feed on barley green. Ugh. 
But boy, afterwards, I feel good. I have an energy. You go, well, just what do you, in, in a spiritual sense, folks, we feed our, our, our soul with the things of the world and we're going to get bogged down. We're going to become depressed and discouraged and, and all kinds of things. But if you feed on the Word of God, well, it'll lift your soul. How does that happen? It's just God. We ought to study the principles of justice. What's right? We ought to re receive the instruction of it. Um, you know, I, I love preaching. I love to. I love to preach. I love to listen to preaching. Uh, I love to. to, to Oh, I tell you, I love it when the preacher gets up and, and boy, he just preaches right to me. I don't get offended because of that. It helps me. Folks, you and I ought to receive the instructions of justice. The Bible says in Proverbs 1 and verse, uh, verse 3, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. You know, a lot of times... We, we get confronted with the truth of the Word of God. We get confronted with our responsibility, our personal responsibility to God's unchanging laws. And we think, well, I'm, I do whatever I want to. I'm an adult now. I can live the way I want to. Uh, not in due justice, you can't. Just, you just can't. You ought to receive the instruction of the Word of God. You've got a personal responsibility to God's unchanging laws. And, and, and folks, we can't change them to make them say what we want them to say. God has told us how we should live. We ought to pray for wisdom. To carry out justice in our life. In 1 Kings chapter 3, the Bible says, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge. And there's that word justice. It's a Hebrew word. It translated judge sometimes, justice sometimes. Uh, give thy, therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people. And so Solomon said, Lord, give, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom to, to judge this people, to, to put before them God's unchanging laws. I have sometimes folks will come to me and say, Preacher, how can I pray for you? And a lot of times I'll say, just, just pray God give me wisdom to pastor this church. Because I need it, folks. I need it. And so that's something we ought to pray for. We ought to always do justice. And uh, in Psalms 119 and verse 1 and 24, uh, the psalmist says, I have done judgment and justice. Lead me not to mine oppressors. In Ezekiel 18 and verse 8, excuse me, the Bible says, He that hath not given forth upon usury, neither hath taken any increase, that hath withdrawn his hand from in iniquity, hath executed true judgment between man and man, hath walked in my statutes, and hath kept my judgments. There's that word again, judgments, justice. Hath kept my personal responsibility to God's unchanging laws. Observing the divine laws of God. And hath kept my judgment to deal truly. He is the just. He shall surely live, saith the Lord. So folks, I ought to always do it. I ought to always do it. You know, you can be tempted at times. In, in your everyday walk. To depart from justice. And, and it may be ever so little. 
Well, then, you know, it doesn't really matter here. But it does. Don't depart from it. Always do it. We ought to take pleasure in doing it in Proverbs 21 in verse 15. The Bible said, it is joy to do just and to do judgment. But destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. You see, you, you, you got this Hebrew poetry here. It's talking about what's, uh, uh, it's a joy to those that do just and to do judgment. That have a personal responsibility to the unchanging laws of God. Observe those that observe God's divine laws. God says there'll be a joy to that person. But on the other hand, destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. To those who refuse to do just. To refuse to come under God's divine law. So there's destruction out there. So I ought to play, take pleasure in doing it. We ought to teach it to others. You know, folks, every one of us ought to be able to teach this lesson to others. In Genesis 18 and verse 19, and I, I like this passage of Scripture. The Lord says, for I know him, he's speaking of Abram, that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. Here's that word to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. The Lord says, I know Abraham. I know that he's going to do right in his family. I know that he's going to teach them justice. Oh, the friend of God, the one that taught justice, our responsibility to the unchanging laws of God. Well, we've been talking about those that receive justice for the most part. But let's just take a few minutes, give you a couple of verses that those, um, those that don't receive God's I'm not saying no, receive His justice, but those that refuse that justice, let me put it that way. The wicked, the wicked scorn at God's justice. Proverbs 19, verse 28, an ungodly witness scorneth judgment. And there's that word again. Ungodly witness scorneth judgment, and the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. Uh, so the wicked scorn, they scoff. At justice, personal responsibility to God's laws. And you hear it all the time. I had a man on this street, I was going door to door on this street, knocked on the door. He come out of his porch, he was mad at me. He did not, you know, who who you think you are coming up here preaching to me? Like preaching was a bad thing. I wasn't really preaching. All I did was knock on his door and, you know, invited him to church. I, he scorned judgment or justice. They abhor justice in Micah 3 and verse 9. Hear this, I pray ye, ye heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel, that abhor judgment and pervert equity. So there's a, hey. I mean, there are those that are opposed to the unchanging laws of God, opposed to their personal responsibility to those unchanging laws. Listen, folks, God's a God that changeth not. I'm the Lord, I change not. And His justice is not going to change. His judgments are not going to change. His laws are not going to change. They're going to always be. Oh, listen, folks, long after you and I have left this ball we call earth, God's judge, justice will still stand. His judgment, His unchanging laws will still be true. Men and women will still be responsible for it. The wicked don't call uh, for justice in Isaiah 59 and verse 4. None calleth for justice nor pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They banish justice, if you will. And justice 
Oh, excuse me. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the streets, and equity cannot enter. I preached a message several years back on truth is fallen in the streets. Folks, that's where we live today. And so we <laughs> keep it far from us. Let us live our licentious lifestyles. And justice is passed over in Luke 11 and verse 42. And the Bible says, But woe unto you Pharisees, for ye tithe, mint, and rue, and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment. And there's that word again. That justice. You pass over justice and the love of God. These things you ought to have done and not left the other undone. What things ought you have done? <laughs> yeah. What'd you say? The tithe. The tithe. Oh, wow, yeah. That's going on in Jesus' day. But anyway, that's not my message tonight. But he says you ought to do these things but you ought not leave the other undone. What other justice? Personal responsibility to God's unchanging. Oh, you ought not leave those things undone. Now, folks, that's where we live today. So justice. How do you receive it? You see, folks, we have to, we have to define terms in the Word of God. Now, God's given us instruction about that little word justice. Our personal responsibility to the unchanging uh, laws of God. And it, it's great. The Bible has much to say about it. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes.